Da na na na, da na na na, da na na na. Edgar TV. Do there, the Edgar Nation. And what I've got today is something a little bit different for you. I'm going to share with you a story. This story today is of my darting history, but also my family's darting history. And today I'm going to share with you some memorabilia unseen. You won't find this anywhere else on any other video or any other website. Unseen memorabilia that's been locked away for decades. A story that dates us back to the 1960s. 60 years before the Edgar made his debut at the World Championships. Now this story starts in Rosington, which is a small village in South Yorkshire, where I grew up on a road called McConnell Crescent, but also was home to where my granddad grew up and spent his entire life. Was, Rosington is a small mining village in the south of Yorkshire. Mining villages was traditionally low-income areas, and my granddad had three children, which two my auntie and one obviously my dad, and a wife at home, so you can imagine becoming a darts champion wasn't the easiest thing to do. However, it was this lack of surplus income actually that played into my granddad's hands and actually helped him become a winner with darts. Now, way before all the nexuses and all the equipment that we've got at home now so we can practice darts at home, you used to have to go down the pub to practice and it used to be very popular, there used to be lots of names on the board. My granddad would go down to the station in Rosington and he'd be going down with enough money for a bag of pork scratchings, a pint and enough for half a pint because what you used to have to do is if you lost you bought your opponent half a pint. So, my granddad would go down, have his pint, put his name on the board, have a game of darts. If he won, he got to stay out longer because he had enough for his, his half a pint. If he lost, he bought the half a pint and went home. And as you can imagine, he had a lot of late nights and that was the only way that he could go out. Now long before the PDC, World Championships and all the razzmatazz we've got with darts today, there used to be an event called the News of the World. Now the News of the World was a national event that everyone could enter from their local pubs. You won your pub championship, then you won your town, you won your county, and then eventually you ended up going down to Alexandra Palace as one of the last eight players. This is an achievement that was achieved by my granddad back in 1963 and you'll see in this photo here of him presented with his silver platter when he won the um, Yorkshire Regional Championships. A piece of memorabilia you can see here that I currently in possession of. I own this. This is my piece of memorabilia and I'll get back to this in a little bit of time and show you a few more things on that and I know it could do a little bit of a polish but still. And in terms of memorabilia like this program, what I'm going to do is I'll take some good photos and I'll put this on my Twitter page at the Edgar 501 So if you want to have a read of that, you can have a look on there rather than me putting it all in this video for you. So it's back to 1963 and here you'll see my granddad with his trophy after winning the Yorkshire Regionals and moving himself down to the Alexandra Palace as the Yorkshire representative for the last eight of the News of the World Championships. And this just wasn't a big deal for my granddad or for the family. This was a big deal for the area and for the mining village of Rosington. And coachfuls of people went down to the Alexandra Palace to support this. And here you see the last eight players in the News of the World from 1963. My granddad there, second from the left. And thanks to great organisation from my nan, we can name the other eight players by looking on the back of the photo. All listed here on the back. Now, although he didn't win the News of the World in 1963, this was a massive achievement, and you can imagine the sheer volume of players that took part in this event. It also allowed us to get more memorabilia. You'll see here on screen now a set of silver and a set of gold darts that was presented to him along the way during this event. And also, this got the attention of Unicorn. You'll see here Unicorn awarding my granddad with this special trophy award. Something I was led to believe by Unicorn that they actually gave to their sponsored players. So my granddad was one of their um, original sponsored players. But our story now fast forwards to the 1990s where with no family influence whatsoever I just stumbled across on a family day out a dartboard that I bought and just took to it and took to the game, really enjoyed it. So I started watching it on TV, I remember watching Dennis Priestley versus Peter Everson in the World Match Play final and then we started going to the World Match Play ourselves from 1997 and I've been pretty much going on and off since then we used to have season tickets all the time for about five six years and i used to get my program and i used to go around and try and get all the players to sign my program you can see on screen now a couple signed here still got them my favorite year though going to the match play was 2001 because i just started playing them myself and you'll see here a newspaper cutting because what they did is they ran like a junior event and i got to to the final managed to play on stage before the phil taylor richie burnett world match play final and i won the event 
But as you can imagine, being a massive young darts fan that I was, that wasn't enough for me. I just had to take the board as well, which was actually signed by all the players of that year's world match play back in 2001. This title win did sort of give me the appetite. And you can see from this photo exactly what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be playing darts on the telly. And I had a very supportive family that helped me with that. My dad would go to work all week and then spend his whole weekend driving me around the country, taking me to tournaments and events. And the whole family got involved, really. We used to go to things like Great Yarmouth for darts tournaments, youth county events. And my nan used to love the opportunity to get back involved and be around the darts again. And she actually got to meet a hero you'll see in this photo, John Lowe, a player she never got to meet at the time when my granddad was playing. And this is where I started to learn about the history of my granddad and the history of what he achieved in the game, which is quite ironic because, like I said, at this point, I just fell into the game. I was on a family day out in Blackpool, I had a pound left and I bought a sticky dartboard. No idea of um, the history of the family and uh, what has already been achieved on the Edgar name. But as you'll know if you've watched this video about my pro wrestling days, that actually in my late teens this train derailed and I came off track when it was time to switch from the youth darts over to the senior darts. This coming from pretty much the heartbreak of the World Youth Masters actually, you'll see here, star said the lineup actually here, you've got Darrell Gurney, Kim Hybrex, and the eventual winner being Kirk Shepard. It wasn't until after about five, six years of doing pro wrestling that one day my dad, who was still playing, said, um, can you come and play for us tonight? Our pub team was short of a player. I said, Dad, I can't do it no more. I can't play darts. And he says, look, he goes, you can either come and play and we'll make them earn their point or I can just give them the point. He goes, either way, you're not going to cost us anything. So you might as well throw the darts. I said, all right, then I'll give it a go. And I did an 11 and 14 darter and won 2-0. And this got me thinking, maybe I could still do it. And this fast forwards us to the 2011 Q School. That story is covered in this video, I've already done that, which is the story of when I first turned professional and how I got onto the Pro Tour. That can fast forward you if you haven't seen that already. But as you can probably guess, it's no secret, there are two things I wanted in darts. One, to play in the world match play, and obviously the second, the thing that every person who ever picks up a dart wants to do, play in the World Championships. A feat that I achieved in 2019 for the first time. Now, as you can imagine, for any player going to the World Championship for the first time, it's a lot to take in, and it really was. But to stand in that room, it's not the same room that the darts now is in, it's literally just to the side. But to stand in that room, and Dave Allen took me in there, and he goes, this is the room where your granddad would have played in 1963 knowing that he was there in what was the world's biggest event at the time and I was stood in the same room about to play in the world's biggest event at the time it's just a surreal moment and I really can't explain what that's like and as I continue to write my own personal darting story it's always nice just to stop and sit and reflect on the history of darts within my family and also to possibly look to the future as now my own son Tommy is starting to show an interest in the game and we could potentially have a third generation of players that take up the game of darts. And throughout all the history, all the speed bumps, all the stops and all the starts, one thing that's just still mind-boggling to believe now is I was just this young man with a dream and it all came true. Dream big guys, work hard and never stop until you get what you want. Everything is possible. Edgar TV. Guys, I've absolutely loved making this video for you. It's been an absolute privilege going back through my family history, getting out the memorabilia, getting out these collectibles. I hope you've enjoyed seeing them. If you have, hit the subscribe button. I'll also, as I said, go over to at the Edgar 501 on Twitter. I'll be putting some better pictures of the program and things like that so you can actually be able to read that. Some incredible bits on there, really. I'll just quickly show you. Things like this in the rules of the program, light, medium and heavy darts, that's pretty much all it sums it up with, made of wood, brass, metal with paper or feather flights, other darts are metal with plastic, the average weight of a dart is half an ounce and length 4 inches. Safe to say the equipment's come on a long way as well. Look at the dartboard here in the background of the photos. It's incredible when you think how far technology's come and the equipment and things that we get these days. Anyway, I'm rambling. This encore's going on too long. Subscribe to the channel at the Edgar501 for more. Hope you've enjoyed.